Good morning and welcome to Sikh Express. We are here with Professor S. S. Jol, Chancellor of Central University of Punjab. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And welcome to Sikh Express. Today we would be conducting the interview on the agriculture policies as well as the social economic problems of Punjab. Sir, can you tell us something about what is lacking in Punjab agriculture sector and why are people not participating as they used to participate earlier in the agriculture policies as well as agriculture as a profession? You see, Punjab agriculture at this stage is in a very dire state. Uh, the main problem is the size of the farm. You see, there is a two-third of the farmers whose size is so low that they are not able to uh, get income out of that which will meet their socio-economic needs, neither the society and neither the family needs nor the economic needs. So question there is how to improve their income and for that there is a no policy. Because for these farmers if we think that their problems can be solved within the farm sector, it is not possible. After all, on small farm, what one can grow? And all of them cannot grow that much. So the answer lies only in providing them off-farm employment, part-time off-farm employment, and render them as part-time farmers. Just a combination of, uh, you can say, the Japanese and Chinese farming. For instance, in Japan, the no, more than 90% of the farmers are part-time farmers. And more than 95% of the income comes from the off-farm employment. So they are able to sustain agriculture. The, for this in Punjab, rather in total India, there is no policy for that. And 83% of the farmers are small and marginal farm in the total country. So unless central we spread these industries into the villages and take the employment to them rather than they coming to the employment in the city, the answer to the economic and social problems cannot be found. <coughs> My solution for that is, for this there is no policy as yet and I am, uh, you see, asking for this for the last about 20 years. Uh, in 1986, I submitted a report. At that time, also I said so. In 19, two, 2002, also submitted a report on diversification, and there too also made this statement. You know what needs to be done is when you spread the industries into the villages, and they should be primarily clean industries. And if not clean, the that should be treated within the four walls of the of the industry, affluence of it, and without polluting the uh, water, underground water and soil and technology exists for that. Now, how to spread is give them a tax concession. Let's reduce it to 25% to 30%, give them two-third of the tax rebate. Uh, what for we are getting the taxes? Just for development. We take one rupee and send, spend back more than, not more than 20 to 15 pesos uh, for development. All this is eaten up within the, in the system. So if we give them this concession, they would be very pleased to get into the villages and uh, with these conditions and then put a condition on them that 90% of the employment will be from the hinterland. It means those area marked areas, 90% will come from that. 10% of course there are some technical posts which may not be available within that uh, radius. So what will happen the laborers in the villages, rather rural economy total, it will, it will revamp the rural economy. That the people from the villages, they will come in the daytime, work in the factory, go back and rest there in the, uh, stay in their houses. They will get the money in their hand and this money can flow back to the agriculture and you can improve the technology and you have the income in you. Now with the small farmers, when, the, when some emergency arises, say somebody falls sick, and uh, there's, a, there's a marriage or other social ceremony, they don't have the money. They go to any source of 
money they can get. Money lender, commission agents, even the bigger farmers. Is giving loans the solution to the farmers, no, no, like the government no, is thinking no, no, at no, no, present? No. That's not the total solution, you see. So what happens is that on one pretext or the other, the farmer gets the loan and is not able to pay back because he spends it, uh, it's diverse this loan to the consumption purposes. And that's why he goes under debt. But if this employment available, they can, they, they have the money with them, even they can borrow from the, even factories can or the industry can also give them advances and they can adjust later on. So they would, all this, uh, what is coming up is a flood of suicides that will stop. So uh, this is integration of industry and agriculture, unless until you do it, uh, it won't work, whatever you may do. Then, uh, for this uh, pollution-free industry, uh, to make it pollution-free, then even if there is a need for a capital subsidy, uh, give it. So actually, you are develop, you are putting these funds in the development of the people in that sense. Now today in Punjab, about eight lakhs to one million people from outside of the state, they are working. But the Punjab youth is unemployed. It is, a, it is a paradox, but paradox can be explained in the manner that the people who come from outside, you see this all these uh, economically weak colonies and you see this Jugi Chompri and uh, Shanties, these people live in this area or they live in Charles with 20 people, 20, 35 people together and there is only one bathroom. So these people spend about a hundred rupees on, on rent and then let's say they eat up up to four, five hundred, six hundred rupees a month, the rest of the money they send back. When it comes to Punjab youth, when he comes here, he needs at least one room with the kitchen, with the, with the, with the, with the bathroom. And that in Ludhiana or industrial city doesn't cost less than eight to, uh, uh, four to five thousand rupees uh, per month. And uh, then his eating habits, so he needs a minimum 10,000 to 12,000 rupees per month to live himself, can't save anything. And still his life is not that good as it, it would be in the villages. So those people don't come. So take the employment to them rather than they coming to the employment in the cities. You would avoid all these slums, you would avoid all these, uh, you see what is happening in the cities overpopulation and uh, the the flow of the money will get back to the... Sir, is the agriculture university contributing to uh, the uh, farming technologies which needs to be improved in uh, Punjab? Yes, certainly. This is university is a well set for that. Uh, when it comes to technology, there cannot be different from small and bigger farmers. You see, the, for example, crops, varieties, agronomic practices, control of the pests and diseases, if it comes to that. So all these things, they are applicable everywhere. You cannot make a separate technology for small farm and you can make a different quality for bigger farm. But when it comes to lumpy investment like tractors, machinery and so forth, here the small farmer suffers because they cannot afford. Even if a wise, wise a tractor, he is not able to uh, get all the implements needed for that purpose. So for this, along with this industrial spread, there should be service centers in the in the villages, both in private as well as the government sector, where the uh, the machinery, tractors, and also the implements of all types should be stored up in a sufficient quality, and that's that's the business. A farmer goes to that uh, center, books up the tractor, books up the operation, and and and, and free and small things they can do family in a part. So what will happen? Employment and industry will generate uh, enough employment industry will be generated in the industry, and also the service centers also would generate the employment uh, for for workers and for also uh, technicians and also drivers and also even the repair workshops etc. Everything will come up there. So small farmers don't need to have machinery, don't need to have have implements. They can help only with the small uh, implements, and the family part time can operate those farms. Even if it's a one acre farm, that will become economical because the person has got the employment outside the factory. So then small farmer and medium farmer, which are the problem today for them, 
it is the this is the only answer so my underlining the statement is that farm sector income problems cannot be solved within the farm sector it has to integrate with the industry can the government play an important role in integrating the as you have mentioned integrating the industry with the farm sector in fact it's a government role when you give a concession tax concession here the government are allocating the money in an appropriate manner rather than collecting funds first and then going to uh, on various schemes when you going to which, which which are flop and fail altogether and unfortunately our system is that we are target oriented people and uh, a target in sense mostly we come up with the finance for example it's a planning suppose we have planned for 10000 crores of rupees as a plan um, for the year and if we are able to spend that money we say we have achieved 100% uh, achievement is our 100% but nobody looks to that this money where spent what is the impact of it no impact analysis is done whether the original purpose is served by that money it is not there so best thing is to encourage the private sector in a sense that instead of your collecting the money and then putting it back and a lot of it is eaten up on the administrative aspects this total money will go to the to the development purpose i would rather like to have this uh, manrega uh, the employment you uh, the that should be integrated also with the with the industry and that will provide employment to the rural people on this so the rural people suffer the most now the governments over the years we don't talk about one specific government have not paid much attention to the rural development now what can be done to improve the rural sector you know this is a, it is a lack of vision and will a lack of will to implement the policies and lack of will to get out of the box so this is the problem we are on routine in, in in grooves we are moving we not think out of this this is the reason of the um, bad state of the rural economy so agriculture alone cannot be tackled you have to tackle the rural economy total and that uh, needs a very solid policy and political will and the vision which unfortunately uh, present system of our political system is not attuned to so is vote bank more important or develop more important for any See, state for people development is more important for the politician vote bank is more important and that is the you can say disconnect here the in the, in, in, in the, with the with the intention to dual vote banks we are providing subsidies which do not get into the pockets of the farmer even for example i uh, i would give you the subsidy which the government gives on water the electricity free electricity this absolutely misplaced subsidy you see punjab uh, provides more than 20 to 22 million tons of food grains uh with move out of the punjab that is the water packed into to imagine imagine how much water is packed into it and what happens is that these 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 grains are sold at a minimum support price while determining the minimum support price the commission considers only the cost because i have been a chairman of the commission myself we consider the cost only what is incurred by the farmer not by the state so farmer spends a zero cost on electricity so his cost is uh, accounted as zero on water so with this the price of the commodity remains low so long so far as it is dependent upon the cost of production now when it remains low the minimum support price remains low it means the issue price will also remain low so as a result what happens is subsidy in the name of the farmer moves to the consumers which are outside the state so farmer does not getting the subsidy but at the face of it looks the government is providing free water to the to the to the to the farmers free electricity to the farmers and that is to create the vote bank this is this is a disconnect which is coming up and unfortunate part is our politicians concerned only for the votes and development they speak from the mouth from the heart they want the want the votes only and uh, uh, virtually nothing is done i won't say nothing but little is done for the uh, development of the state this is the problem so if we talk about the industrial sector moving 
ahead from the farming sector. Now, the industry is also not performing as well at, as it was doing, say, five or ten years back. What is the reason for that? There are several reasons. Uh, the main reason is that you look to the states around. You have Himachal Pradesh, you have a Kashmir, you have a Haryana, you have a uh, attack along a UP, Western UP, all this. Now, for Kashmir and this uh, Himachal Pradesh, there are special packages. Industrial concessions, naturally, people prefer to, if not move from here, at least additional industry should go there. Now, then you look to these uh, two states, UP and uh, Haryana, they are connected with the industrial corridor. You see, and Haryana is uh, connected with the center of power. The industry is there. Punjab is a landlocked in a sense. Neither it has got a, any 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 package, nor it's linked to any industrial corridor. So this is the reason. Uh, moreover, the land here is very costly because it is two crop irrigated land, and to buy land is very difficult here, uh, costly here. So these are the few of the reasons. Moreover, the policy of the state, in a sense, uh, is not encouraging the industry. Uh, in a sense, they should, as I have told, that if they give this concession, go to the will industry, will come up. The Punjab state is most suited for the small industries, not big industries. Now take, for example, the case of these big projects. The labor will come from outside. You see, bigger industry labor will come from outside. You are providing only land. And uh, then the actually the area uh, does not get that much employment as they would get spread out of the small industries outside. This is reason. so. It depends all how the government thinks about it, or how the government is serious. So whatever party, I am not talking a particular party. For the last about sixty years, I am seeing it, and uh, this aspect is not taken into account. So, so you think that uh, all industry is the only way out to revive the industrial sector? That's right. And no, not only small industry collector, but small industry spread into the villages on Japanese and Chinese style. That's the answer to the... Uh, what do you mean by Japanese and Chinese style? Japanese, I told you that the Japanese people, they work in the industries most of the time and they part-time there. In Chinese also, they have, along with the uh, farming sector, they have all the industries along with them. People are working there too also. Uh, so, because I have um, gone to China about three times, studied that. So, there is, uh, there is no person unemployed at all or underemployed right in the villages so as a result when you are when you are giving employment to the people then many social problems are solved the drug problem is solved the suicide problem is solved see the uh, and, and and the law and order problem is solved a person who is happily employed he will never be an uh, indisciplined person okay now uh, since you have raised the drug problem is drug menace affecting the agriculture and the industrial sector in punjab it is affecting the youth. By that matter, it is affecting all the sectors of the society. Uh, you see, drug problem is a very peculiar phenomena here. Uh, I start with an example. In fact, I wrote an article around so. When we migrated from Punjab, I was at that time 19 years old. We got a temporary land in which there was a license to grow the uh, poppy. And uh, this was this was not given to the person that was on the location. This this field can be grown poppy. So we grew this poppy about for seven years after partition, and uh, the licensed dealers would buy it. And our those sitting room in the in the in the house that was always full of poppy. Now my queer question is that none of us went addict to that copy, the poppy. And none of the villages in the village or in the neighborhood went any addict to the poppy. Then, as soon as this uh, uh, the the ban started, what happened? The smuggling started, and along with the smuggling came promotion. So they cat caught these young people. So it is a phenomena which I call it ban smuggle. Promote syndrome. 
you, you, one would not smuggle unless central promotes. So if there is a freely available, nobody promotes. You look to the, there is a pang all around. You have seen it. And then you, how many pangi we have got? None. Because there nobody is to promote. Now at this stage, it may not be possible to go back to the system, but this is how it has come up. So, and this is a doorway in a sense from Pakistan to Punjab, the smuggling come in and then one thing goes, uh, see costly, people shift to another one, therefore all this uh, heroin and, 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 and ice etc, they have come in. Uh, so this has created a havoc in the, in the Punjab in this sense. So is law and order also related to it? It is, it is very difficult to say law and order. To catch the addict is not the answer. To catch the addict is not the answer. Answer is to stop the flow of it into the, into the interstate. And there laxity comes in. Here is a nexus of the politicians, of the, of the, of the administration, of, of, the, of the police and the smugglers. We may admit, we may not admit it, but that is there. See, this is, this is one aspect. And moreover, we have not done the people to the, the to uh, see, persuade the uh, young people away from the drugs. And there, are, there, there are possibilities to do it. Uh, my answer to this is that uh, if the people get the employment, like I am telling, this is one aspect. The second aspect is that, uh, in my belief, the evenings are very dangerous. If you are not able to engage a person in the evening, there is always likelihood to go for, for these intoxicants. So if in the villages, every village has a playground with a very uh, low cost uh, games like football, volleyball, basketball and has a akhada and also have a kabaddi and along with a library. If you provide these in the villages, along with the spread of industry which provide employment, the total problem will be solved. But the question is neither is on policy on agro-industrial uh, policy, nor there is a nor there is a effort on going by this so that the evenings of the young people that is they are there. So the there. other problem which most of the people are talking about is narco-terrorism. Now, whatever happened in Gurdaspur and Pathan Court, we are all aware. Now, do you think that we can relate uh, terrorism activities in Punjab to drug menace as well? Oh, certainly, why not? Because it's the drugs which sustain them. You see, it is not terrorism which sustains the drugs. It is the drugs which sustain the terrorism. If they don't have the source of income, then terrorism will not become possible. So, it's a drug money which the, these terrorists use. So, this is, this is total nexus in that sense, which is, which is uh, interdependent in that sense. So, the other thing is, now, if we have to look forward and say that this is the takeaway message, what would you like to say about reviving the agriculture sector and the industrial sector? It has to start at the political end. You see, unless until we elect a government which is concerned with the development in the agriculture, industry and service sector, rather than working for the vote bank on by hook or crook or on, on means whatever they may be, this situation will not improve. Unfortunate part is that when it comes to elections, there is a lot of money and drugs poured into the people. And that's the starting point for next five years. So this, when, you, when you are giving free intoxicants, liquor and all that for, for let's say a one month or 25 days, one gets addicted to it, then he search for it. So unless until we make this uh, election system uh, see pure of the uh, these drugs and uh, uh, intoxicants and uh, become become not dependent on money, then everything will come up, right? Because today, person who is honest person, who is a gentle person, who wants to do something for the society, 
he has no scope for for uh, contesting elections it is there one has to be moneyed back one has to be you know uh, self centered one has to be loud mouth mouth the and muscled person only then one can um, dare up uh, to 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 elections see uh, i recall uh, pandit jawaharlal nehru uh, addressing the uh, uh, journalist in bombay he said you have to be very aware otherwise the money bags with loud mouth and muscled people will hijack the democracy that was nehru's nehru's utterance and i believe we have come to that so it is the people's education about the system unfortunately in our system neither we teach at any stage any ethics we do teach religion religion fundamentalism but we don't teach them ethics the one is the lack of ethics in our education other is the lack of lack of civics in our education you ask common man how the president of india is elected i think 99% people will not be able to tell you how the election is done of the president of india so we lack there the value of vote the is not in the mind of the people and also at the same time there are no ethic no ethics and drilling in the minds of the people this is the this is lacking and we need to correct it and from the education system the job of the educator and education system which is failing in this so if you have to put money behind any politician or political party which political party can really help in reviving punjab you know that is a question which i would not like to answer the reason is that uh, i do not belong to any party and uh, i need clean people whatever party it may be you see who are not self centered who are the society societal approach they have got development their approach if we i want that those people may look at party may be any otherwise today all parties they use this money they do this all those thing they do it so since i don't belong to any party and i don't want to be give a biased statement for any party thank you very much sir welcome thank you welcome to sikh express program right angle today we are in chandigarh to interview professor g s tillo we have exclusive story on akali bjp government in punjab